log in here. Uh, so uh, again, just to remind everybody, we're on our third and, and final day of our retreat. Um, looking forward to the session today. Um, again, um, if you're just joining us, if you could place your audio on mute. Uh, so we don't have any background noise unless you're speaking and use the chat feature uh, for any questions. If you'd like to place your contact information, uh, et cetera, use the chat feature for that. Also remember you have the reactions button, uh, which is on the uh, bottom of your screen that you can mouse over that uh, icon for reactions and that pops up a menu that allows you to raise your hand if you have a question then you'd like something answered quickly uh, during the session, you can use that feature. It also allows you to lower your hand when you've had your question re uh, responded to. Um, we encourage folks to keep their video on uh, so that we can actually see who you are. If uh, you can't keep your video on uh, because of bandwidth issues, uh, if you have a photo uh, of yourself, you can use that as the still picture if that's okay with you, we'd like that as well. And uh, I think, let's see, we're uh, 9.03, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, again, welcome everybody. My name is Juan Abeta. I'm with the Backbone team, and uh, we're on day three of our retreat. In a little bit here, I'm going to go over uh, what our meeting goal is and, and review our agenda. Uh, but right now, what I'd like to do is if someone is new to the session, you have not been here previously, uh, if you don't mind raising your hand, we'd like people to briefly introduce themselves, just your name and your org. So is there anyone here that has not been here previously? Let us know. I'm not seeing any hands, so it looks like we're all old hands in this process so great so let me go over uh the uh agenda for today uh we're going to continue with the breakout rooms and so uh yesterday uh you went through an exercise of uh kind of figuring out who all is in your immediate ecosystem uh that you're going to be dealing with over over time and so today we're going to look at that some more and we're, there's some specific activities related to that and i'm not going to get into the details but that'll be uh, work that we'll do in the breakout rooms. We're going to spend extra time. Uh, we heard you yesterday saying that at the breakout rooms were you felt a little uh, tight on time. And so that was a request that um, several of you made about a little bit more time in the breakout rooms. So we readjusted the schedule so that there's about 15 additional minutes uh, in, in the breakout rooms today to give you a little bit more time. Um, <clears throat> when we, uh, so we'll spend about close to a little over an hour and a half, I believe, in the breakout rooms uh, in, in the first session here. And then we'll uh, have a break, uh, we'll return, and we'll, uh, when we return, we'll kind of have a little readout <clears throat> and reflections uh, from the breakout room. And then we'll do a little bit of a, another part of a partner overview. And then we'll have our wrap up, which will let us know what uh, commitments we've all agreed to, uh, what our next steps are going in the short term, uh, and um, answer any questions you may have at that point. So um, our meeting goal today is to begin for each of the work teams uh, to begin their initial uh, planning for how their team is going to self-assemble. That means, again, identifying any additional folks you would like to add to your team, how you plan on onboarding them so that when they join, they're ready to uh, participate. Um, and uh, also what your schedule is gonna be in terms of your meeting schedule for your team. What we'd like to do uh, at the end of the day is collect all of that data, and then we'll have a master calendar so that anybody can look at that calendar and say, Oh, the Food Hub team meets on the second Wednesday of every month and uh, from 12.30 to 2.30 or whatever it is that you come up with. But the idea is that we have a master schedule so that uh, there's some transparency there. We all know when all the teams are meeting uh, and uh, who the point of contact at this point in time is. 
We recognize that all the teams don't have all of their full membership yet. So right now we're just asking that you temporarily appoint someone to serve as a uh, point of contact. Uh, as we go forward and those teams do get fully assembled, we'll go through a more formal process of selecting leadership for each of those teams to represent uh, the, your particular team on the leadership council. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go a little off script here for a minute and I hope I don't scare everybody. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to, I, last night I took a look at the uh, outputs that you guys did, your jam boards from your work team, from your work teams. And I just have to say, I was very, very impressed. Uh, it gives me an analogy that I have to share with you. And that is, uh, we had a beautiful rain last night. It was, uh, my neighbor informed me it's their first one in several months, about since last September. And uh, while I was walking out in the milpa in the, in the pasture this morning, uh, there's about 80 corn plants that have popped up. And uh, I mentioned that because uh, when I see that, it just gives me like this really sense of renewal, the sense of resilience. Um, the seed has been handed down generation and generation in my family. So I'm just another caretaker, if you will, of the seeds. And so what I'd like to do today is dedicate our work today and dedicate our session and, and what we're gonna come up with today uh, to all of those who've come before us and have provided us with seeds, the seeds that nourish us and, and grow the plants that, that we depend on for food. And so we're part of a long tradition of uh, renewal and resilience. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna toggle through some of the, uh, uh, Well, I thought I was going to toggle, but it's not allowing me. Let me see if I can re-get this back up. Here we go. Maybe it'll work this time. Yes. Uh, I wanted to toggle through the uh, various uh, jam boards that you did. And so this was the food safety group, and I'm not gonna go through any detail here, but you can see that the food safety group started uh, uh, populating their ecosystem. Uh, so did the food hub capacity group and the food access group. So it seems like all of you were very, very busy yesterday uh, putting in here all your seeds. And I say this because these are the seeds which we're gonna grow our project from. All of those seeds that you identified are, are potential growth for us going forward. And it gives me a good sense of uh, like renewal uh, and resilience that um, those of us here in, in, that have gone through this process, we're gonna continue providing seeds to our community. And so I uh, wanna dedicate, uh, like I said, this session today to those who uh, came before us and provided uh, seeds that we share today. I'm uh, going to turn it over now uh, to Elena, who's going to talk a little bit, uh, a little bit of a wrap up or a little bit of an update from our work activity from yesterday. Elena. Thank you, Juan, and thanks for grounding us um, back in the intention of why we're all here together. That was a beautiful story you told, so thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm here just to give a little bit of a synopsis of what happened yesterday in terms of in case folks weren't here. So we spent time yesterday breaking out um, self-selected into breakout rooms and engaging in some asset or actor mapping around um, the priority topics that have emerged for the work. And so under each one of the work teams, as you remember, there's topics that were sort of predefined. We asked you to socialize those, verify them, see if they resonate with everyone in your group. Um, it seems like for the most part, people stuck with the general framing of the buckets that were provided, which I thought was an interesting outcome. Um, but what we heard loud and clear from all of you is more breakout room time, as Juan said. And so we we put our heads together a little bit, our tired brains um, after our time yesterday and restructured the agenda so we could have a little bit more room in the breakouts. Um, and the goal today, as Juan said, is really to help shepherd you all into um, work planning, essentially. So the first step of that is figuring out who's gonna who's gonna be doing this work together and how do we bring in new partners. So um, 
I am going to walk us through the details of some of the tools we'll use today, but I first wanted to hand it over to Christina so that she can provide one update that we really landed on was looking at the breakout rooms. Um, and I'll just name it that we didn't have as much participation in the evaluation team as we had maybe anticipated. And so again, we came together and, and thought strategically about that. And, and Christina is going to share a little bit more about where we're headed in terms of that structure. So I'll hand it to you, Christina, and then I'll, I'll give the details for where we're headed in the breakout rooms. Thank you, Elena. Um, one of the things that became pretty apparent is that, you know, people wanted to be part of a work team, but they also wanted to have some kind of say and evaluation, and it was just difficult to be in two places at once. And also it, it occurred to us, and it was something that had been kind of nigging away at my brain um, before, is that the evaluation isn't really a work team so much as, it, as it's an umbrella over the entire project to make sure that everything is, is going in a direction and so everyone is informed about the work that we're doing. So um, during office hours, it was uh, decided that the evaluation is more of a hub than a work team with UNM as uh, you know, the, our, our analysis and research partner. And I serve as a bridge between UNM and the project as a whole. Um, so what we'd like to do, and I think it'll work really well to ensure that everyone has uh, access to uh, the research and also um, make sure that everyone, all the work teams have a say in consenting to the evaluation is that each work team, now there's four instead of five because the evaluation team is not a work team so much as it's a work hub. So the four work teams will assign a research representative and that could be you know, the same as the leadership person. It could be someone different. That's up to each work team. And then that individual would be like a main communication point. So the evaluation hub, you know, which is myself and people from UNM would create documents, tools, protocols for the research. We would send those uh, tools to the evaluation rep. Um, that evaluation rep would uh, provide consent and how that works is dependent upon each work team work teams can decide that the evaluation rep could just kind of make decisions for everyone. Uh, the work team uh, can decide that they want the evaluation rep to you know, present something formal and then everyone provides consent. However, the work teams choose to handle that. And then that evaluation rep would come back to the evaluate or the, uh, would come back to the evaluation hub and say, yes, this is fine. So, and then we would move forward. Um, if a work team wanted more info or they wanted a discussion, I would be happy to uh, come to a, a meeting and we could discuss that. Um, then I would just take concerns back to the evaluation hub and you know, we would address those concerns uh, within whatever document or toolkit we were creating at that juncture of the project and, and make adjustments. Um, as long as it's within, you know, standard research protocols to make sure the research is solid across the entire three years. Uh, but it was felt that this way would allow people to have uh, inclusion in the evaluation process without feeling torn between having to choose a, a evaluation work team and uh, like the food access work team or food hub work team. So. Um, so that's what we came up with. So today there'll be four breakout work rooms for the work teams. And then the evaluation hub will be myself and Mary. And, you know, basically we're going to start finishing some of the protocols. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure when each work team will be selecting their leadership person. I'm still not clear on that myself. Um, but you know, when that person is selected, you know, please do also select an evaluation representative. Um, and you know, let me know. And what I'll do is add that individual to 
an evaluation Slack channel. And within that channel is where we'll exchange documents for review and communicate and just keep those lines of communication open between the evaluation hub and the four work teams. Um, does anyone have any questions about that? Any points of clarification? Hopefully I explained it okay. Okay, I know Valerie uh, email, actually emailed me last night expressing concern that uh, Valerie with La Maltanita that, you know, she felt like she, you know, she wanted a say in this, but, you know, was busy. So, um, you know, I was, I, I figured if she felt that way, other people did too. So I think this will work to serve everyone's needs and make sure that everyone has a say in the evaluation. I don't see any, any questions. So thank you very much. No, pass it on. Thanks, Christina, for, for doing that. We really appreciate it. And again, I hope that you guys are starting to get the sense of how emergent this process is, right? We can flex on the moment and, and make adjustments. This is a shared space. And so we come again as facilitators to the process, but really rely on your input to help us work on structure and how, how the teams are gonna function. So thanks for being flexible and thanks for putting brains together, Backbone team. And Christina, really appreciate your leadership in the space. Um, great. So what I'm going to do is just explain a little bit more about where we're headed for about the next hour and a half today. So we have a goal for the work team breakout session this afternoon. Um, and the goal of that is really to have each one of you commit to being a, a part of at least one team um, and to work towards identifying who else needs to be on that team and some potential interim roles. And when I use the term interim roles, I really do mean that, like maybe through July. So we're looking at how do we get these teams off the ground, start doing some initial planning, make sure that we can maintain um, consistent communication, that we can maintain those shared values as we're working in these groups. And so um, we will ask you to do a little bit of selection of individuals that can play those roles to make sure that information is flowing and that we're able to move forward as we look at, um, I'll say a July goal of determining leadership amongst these teams. Uh, so in the, in the moment, it's gonna be sort of a shared process and hopefully that will give you guys an opportunity to also understand what those different roles might look like in relationship to your capacity and workload. So one thing I wanted to add to what Christina shared is we, we flagged like, oh, we don't want people to feel like if you're an evaluation rep and in a work team, that that's double doing capacity. Um, so we, we can talk about some of those things in our small groups and understand you know, how we can split the work a little bit better. But what I'm gonna do real quickly is actually screen share um, for our room facilitators because <laughs> I want everybody to feel comfortable with how this process is gonna work. So just like yesterday, uh, Michael's gonna help shepherd us into breakout rooms. You can go to the same breakout room you were in yesterday if you'd like to. This is also an opportunity to try on a different team and go and learn you know, about what happened yesterday and be a part of that group. So um, what we're gonna do is you guys are gonna break out. So I'm gonna pick on Denise cause you're room number one. So Denise as the facilitator is gonna pull up this document and each one of you can as well using our shared agenda. And this is your template for today's activity. Um, we looked at the asset maps, they're beautiful. They also probably need a little bit more attention today to be able to be able to carry into the next step. So you have a link embedded here that'll take you right to your Jamboard. So I would encourage all the participants in the room to go onto the Jamboard so that you can help be a part of organizing that um, so that we can move to the next stage. And the question and when looking at these asset maps is really, what do we need to add right now to establish our membership? What partners do we need to make sure are here today that have a relationship to this work team that we wanna make sure are on here so that we can engage in some recruitment and identify who might do that and how onboarding might work. Then we're gonna ask you to identify those interim roles we mentioned. So a meeting facilitator, which we're suggesting that person might hold the space for the next few meetings. Um, a meeting scribe, so much like yesterday and today, right? There is somebody that's gonna to need to be sort of note-taking and we acknowledge that that's really hard to do while you're facilitating, especially virtually. So we're recommending that you have a meeting scribe moving forward, but also for today. 
And then this is where we're asking you to elect your work team representative. And that's the person that will do the share out this afternoon about where you guys land and will act as a point, um, as a representative for the team through July in terms of just making sure that we're funneling information that goes down to the entire team through you. Um, so again, it doesn't mean you're leading anything. It doesn't mean you're the mastermind. It means you're facilitating that communication chain in the project. And then as Christina mentioned, we really also want to see you guys consider an evaluation representative or constellation of folks that want to be involved in helping to determine the metrics and data collection and data analysis as it relates to the work that your group is doing. And wanted to just name that if folks are not sure which team they want to be in still, that's totally okay. What we're going to do is move towards developing a channel for each team on Slack. And we would ask that you reach out to that work team representative after the retreat and, you know, do a little bit of socializing, uh, have a conversation about what you guys determine in the retreat and next steps moving forward. But that's also where we are trying to gather all this data, as Juan said, to create a master calendar. Um, then we're going to ask you guys to name a point of contact. So that's the person that will actually, you know, commit to watching the Slack, watching the email, and making sure that your group gets all of that. And we would recommend a secondary contact because life is life and we can't, one person can't hold all of that. Um, then we're going to move you down into populating some membership for your team. And so we've got support team members, transactional partners, and partners to recruit. And this is not going to be complete at this stage, we understand. So it's just sort of a phase one, your initial, here's who we really need to reach out to in the next couple of months. We're then asking if you guys could start thinking about when you want to meet again. The expectation is that um, we should probably plan to meet monthly at a minimum as we're trying to carry forward a lot of work right now and get these teams up off the ground. So it probably is going to take um, a little more handholding in the beginning and a little more collective thought. And then once people get into the pattern of meetings, I feel like that can shift and change. Um, but we also want to encourage standing meetings. That's a part of our project transparency is to make sure people know how to connect into your team at any point, should they desire to. So we, the master calendar is dependent on you guys having standing meetings. And then the last thing that we were hoping and we trimmed out of our agenda today for full transparency is for you guys to start brainstorming some of those training and skill building needs um, that will either help you facilitate your meetings in your work team. They could be content related training. They could be DEI training. They could be anything that you think. It could be really detailed um, Zoom training. Whatever's gonna help you feel comfortable to step into a place of potentially leading your working group. And so we wanna make sure that everybody within the working groups feels like they could lead if they wanted to. That's a part of our capacity building aim is to not let issues of um, skill building um, determine who is the leader of the group. So we're trying to flatten that out a little bit. And then we're going to bring you back to the large group and ask you to share out your team roster and your point of contact and meeting schedule so that we can start to move towards that comprehensive plan. So I'm going to pause and ask for any clarifications from anybody on this and our room facilitators making sure you feel comfortable um, with this activity. And I will say that you have and about an hour and a half, we think maybe you might need an hour um, for the tail end and a half an hour to revisit your asset maps. But you can certainly time manage as you see fit in your working teams. But we do ask that you get down to that level of scheduling so that we can, as your backbone team, bring that calendar to you um, in a timely way. Any questions before we attempt to get everyone in the right breakout rooms? <laughs> All righty, um, Pam, Roy, and then Juan. Just quick, um, I see uh, Kendall being the lead in the room, but I'm not seeing Kendall with us right now. She emailed yesterday. She's going to be a little bit late, so she'll probably pop in around 10. So Pam, I'll be with you because I, I don't anticipate the tech needs as much today. Okay, great. Thanks. And you'll be able okay. Thanks. Juan. Just a reminder to folks that are on phone, stay in the main room and uh, our support staff, Michael Green, will transfer you uh, into the room you want to go into. So again, for those folks that are joining us by phone, just hang in the main room and we'll transfer you over. And also when you end your uh, breakout rooms, um, 
you'll be coming back into the main room and actually that'll be our break. We'll start at that time and there'll be a video uh, uh, that'll be playing. So uh, that don't, don't get freaked out that uh, everybody went away. We're just, we're just still all on break. And then as soon as the video plays, we will uh, start up again. Thanks Juan. So um, folks should anticipate, depending on when your breakout rooms wrap up, the break is about 10 minutes. So at two, I'm sorry, not two o'clock. Wow, my days are all off. At 11 o'clock, <laughs> you should anticipate being back from your break in case you run into that. Just as a big round number to come back to this room if, you're, if you happen to walk away from your screen. So, all right, thank you all. If you need any support, we will have some folks in the main room. Um, hopefully today, is pretty user friendly. Uh, let us know if you run into any issues. And I think Denise chatted back out the rooms. So room number one is food access. Room number two is food hub capacity. Room number three is food safety. And room number four is New Mexico grown. Right, and, and where do we find our easy, easy link to click over to our um, Jamboard? For each of you these find groups, that in find the master agenda, Steve, click on the food safety that's blue, the link that's blue, and then it's embedded right in there. It'll open in a new window, a document, and then you'll see your asset map there. And we're gonna find those. Uh... Michael, if you want to start moving people, I'm gonna share my screen, Steve, just so you can see again, and I'll walk you through it real quick. I think it's right. easy. I just, I just <laughs> didn't know if we were to click it Okay, off your so here we are okay. on today's agenda, scrolling all the way down. And then here we are, Steve. I can put the link right in the chat box for you, if that's helpful. Thanks. Sure. I'm very pedestrian with these kinds of high-speed technology. Oh, I feel like this stuff is like 2.0 level too, Steve. So no, it is. no worries. Indeed. Let me put it in the chat for you. <laughs> I'm quite comfortable in 1.0. I'm going to... <laughs> what do you call what was it called when you take the same class over and over i'm going to be remedial in one point <laughs> remedial zoom <laughs> okay there you are so when you get in there um i've got the document up on my screen steve you can see right there in their question two there's some blue text that's your asset map I'm on it thank you elena great all righty i'm gonna mute myself and move over to room four elena can you share that out with everybody sorry sorry the links Pam? She left. <laughs> Hi, this is Erin on um, 505 Could you move my phone into breakout room number three, food safety? Yes, definitely. Thank you. And Elena, I realized I was on mute. Yes, please. Um, I'm, in, I'm in Steve's class, so <laughs> the Got remedial. It, um... So I was looking for it on slide. I mean, I'm getting there, I promise. There we go. All right, and I Give will you. be in your room in just a moment too, but I just messaged it to yeah, you. Yeah, that's great. No, that's super helpful. I feel much better now. <laughs> All right, and I'm not seeing a way to get to my room either, so. All right, and what room are you in again, Pam? I'm in room four, thanks, Michael, thanks. Yeah, it's not popping up for me, so. Cool, send you out. Thank you, dear. Ah, there you go. Perfect. Hi, this is Adriana with Desert Spoon. Um, I wasn't here yesterday, so I, I guess I would be in the Food Hub group. All right, I will send you over to the Food Hub group. Okay, thank you. All right, and uh, Thomas, is there a certain room that you would like to be sent to again? If you'll just put your video on so we know people are here. And if you don't have video, that's fine. Um, yeah, that'll help us get rolling. And then we're going to jump into some reflections from the breakout teams and then provide some next steps. And we will wrap at noon today.
Alrighty. Um, so Denise, I'm going to hand it off to you if you don't mind shepherding us through reflections again today. Um, yeah, and then I will pick up. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, <clears throat> Elena. Um, yeah, I'm so glad you've got that in the chat. We had the, the number of the rooms. So um, I think today we'll go backwards in order uh, from the rooms themselves. And hopefully this will be a time, I, uh, I don't think I have the exact um, right thing open in front of me. I know there's something where the things we are supposed to collect from everyone, um, we're hoping to get Elena, tell me if I'm right. Are we asking people, the, re the reporters from the room to actually tell us who is on their list and the meeting dates and the point of contact out loud? Or is that supposed to be shared in the chat? Can you remind me how we want them to share that out? Yeah, I, I don't think you need to name your entire roster, <laughs> but any any reflections that came to you today as you were working on your asset maps and filling some gaps um, is what I would say in terms of who's on your team. And then yes, we would like you to name your point of contact and your next meeting date. Um, and then we'll take notes on that and use that to develop our master calendar. Great, thank you for <laughs> clarifying that. This is why we have a very talented project manager. Um, so yeah, I think just what Elena said, we're going to just do reflections on what your team talked about, where you got, and ask you to tell us your point of contact and a secondary point of contact and uh, your main meeting date if you have one. So starting with um, room four, which was the New Mexico grown room, if your um, share back person can do so. We didn't decide on one. Um, we didn't get there. So I will fill in Ophelia, Pam, Elena, please. Um, we had a lot of back and forth on the purpose of our subgroup. Um, we talked through the fact that it's mildly unpopular in comparison to other groups and that it's duplicative in terms of other work that, that is in creation right now in terms of NM Grown. So specifically looking at the New Mexico Grown Coalition, which is which is being um, led by Miss Elena here as well. So there's a connection there. Um, we have an interagency task force that's meeting regularly, and we just have some emerging work that feels like a more natural space for the sub, this subgroup as we had originally sort of conceived it. Um, we talked through some issues with those other groups of not being as farmer focused, and so kind of called that out as sort of some a, a red flag for us in terms of moving forward with these other groups. Um, and discuss some formal processes for the NM Grown Coalition work to connect with the three subgroups here so that there's place for, again, formal guidance, formal direction, and to go back and forth on proposals of what the future of NM Grown should look like. Those of you that we, I mean, we all work together pretty closely, and so I think you'll understand why, why we sort of are proposing that this group subgroup is um, uh, not necessary. So. That's where we landed. We have another planning meeting on um, May 6th, I think, to do some just a, f a few more logistics and details that need to be worked out. And then we'll move forward with the New Mexico Grown Coalition, which is being rolled out this summer. Very similar structure and framework. And uh, we would just invite our farmers and our food hub partners to, to be represented in that group. Um, and so, Elena, anything I major I missed there? What I will add is that we committed to the fact that in the coalition structure, the New Mexico Grown Coalition, we will utilize collective impact procedures and processes. So we're going to take it there instead of bringing it here, essentially, because we already have um, kind of a critical mass growing of community members that come in both on the procurement side, education side, and school garden. So it's a little bit more um, community based, the New Mexico Grown Coalition, but we really want to adopt the collective impact framework and make sure that we're bringing proposals to each of the working groups in this constellation. So food access, food safety, um, and food hub capacity that relate to the future of the program. So we named really specifically, um, for instance, that with the food access group, we know that the 
the things we're gonna want to brainstorm with you guys on and bring proposals are about expanding program access points um, and doing some advocacy that supports that, right? Like that's kind of how it nests. And then food safety, the approved supplier program leadership team, uh, which a lot of you <laughs> sit on. And so making sure that as we look at food safety in an upstream way, we bring those proposals in. Um, and then food hub capacity, recognizing that we have a lot of work to do on the value chain component of these public uh, purchasing programs and so bringing proposals that would help to bring more equity and root the needs of these programs more in farmers. So we acknowledge that that's the gap in the room right now and so um, we sort of thought about ways that we could utilize the other teams to bring proposals in the collective impact structure. But we went rogue. And so um, we're also kind of curious for some feedback, Juan, um, because yeah, I think, I wonder if other groups ran into this a little bit, but that's our reflection. And so we can, are I, can I mention, sorry, Elena, one more thing I think that's unique about our group is that we have existing infrastructure. So this subgroup was just adding, and I, I referenced it, Ophelia, I could feel that the, like in her voice had a very similar, like we, like it's too much. There's too many meetings and especially at the agency level, like we can't. And so really trying to figure out how to integrate this work. And so um, I think the New Mexico grown work is, is different from the other subgroups or working groups. So I just wanna kind of clarify that too. And our points of contact are Kendall as prime contact and Ophelia will be the secondary contact moving forward. So just to clarify, every time you use the word subgroup, Kendall, you mean you meant work team? So Sorry, mean, okay. Team. Okay, because I got a little bit um, confused. I certainly understand what you were trying to, I'm not sure I fully understand and that just might be me, but um, I don't know if I fully understood then how you see the work team. If, if what I heard is that the proposed, that in all the other places where the New Mexico grown partners, that then proposals will somehow so the New Mexico grown team, will it still exist? I guess that's my quick question. No, it, it's we would like to propose that it dissolves and that it, um, and we need to figure out what that interface looks like with the other work teams, work groups, okay. work teams. Um, and like to protect that, the interface and again, the, the two-way feedback loop between our, you know, our farmers, our food hubs, the Anim Grown program, but that this work group is not the appropriate place to do it. Um, and so we, we are proposing to dissolve it. Okay, thank you for the clarification. <clears throat> um, I guess I had that power here as the facilitator to ask, to ask about that. Um, okay, that's in, I think this is exactly why this is what we meant by this all being emergent and fluid. And until the groups are sitting together and talking, um, I think we're gonna find, I, I bet we're gonna find all kinds of really solid questions like that. Um, and then did, okay, we'll, we'll get your meeting dates, proposed meeting dates and things like that separately. So uh, the next room going backwards, room three was food safety. And I don't know who your spokesperson was today. Hi, um, so this is Erin Ortigoza um, with food safety. And um, we, let's see, so we established our um, point of contact. I'll be the, the primary point of contact with Mike um, Ventisigue, the secondary. And um, in, our, in our meeting, we started out um, kind of similarly looking at our, you know, like the, the universe of connections around food safety and how we are leaving it open to the evolution of potentially merging with, you know, other groups as it arises in the next few months. We think that it would be good, though, to focus um, on kind of the food safety teams, um, you know, like a team building at, at the outset, at least. So we're looking at holding the integrity of that group for now and being open to how it might, um, yeah, dovetail with other groups later. And um, we then went into, um, pretty cool exercise on reframing and renaming our group. So we agreed that food safety, uh, you know, with the connotation and kind of the limitations that, that that implies, we wanted to really expand the universe of what is really happening with, with the work in food safety. So we're proposing to name the group food quality. And we're excited about that because, you know, the quality of the food you know, when, when, when we're looking at the, like, you know, the recipients of the food, the consumers, the people in the community, they're not necessarily thinking about all the steps that went into making this food, you know, fresh and available and perfect. It's, it's the quality of the food that really stands out. 
So thinking about it from a, you know, a consumer perspective, and then also all of the other quality pieces that come into the good food we want to provide. So the, um, the quality of the soil, the quality of the resources, the water, and, you know, leading into the regenerative potential for how we're growing food in New Mexico. We feel that that falls under this umbrella of food quality in a really um, logical and exciting way. So, again, we're working on reframing um, everything that's involved in this. So that's, that was kind of a, a really great conversation. We also came up with um, a potential diagram to show the foundational aspects of food quality, thinking about it as like a pyramid and how the basis, you know, there's a lot of that building blocks in that that creates this quality um, product that we're then able to offer to our community. So we... Um, we identified our roles. We went to the dock pretty quickly, and um, we got um, our roles established. Um, and I don't know if I need to like go over them right now. I can't. I'm so I'll I'll be a you know representative. Um, Ashley's going to be a temporary scribe. Um, Steve's going to hang on to the facilitator role. Um, and uh, let's see, Mike's the second point of contact. And um, we also, in addition to like naming our roles, we, we, we spent some time clarifying the scope of each of those roles just so that we were all on the same page, understanding sort of what falls under that role and got consent and moved forward with that. Um, we uh, talked about our next steps. So we, um, our, ne our next steps, we set our next date for May 14th. And um, our time block is definitely uh, 9.37 a.m. to 10.37 a.m. And uh, we're, we're really, we're, we're bringing the quirky vibe. So the food quality group is going to bring a quirky and fun and levity, positive vibe to all this really amazing work. So we're meeting from 9.37 to 10.37. And that's kind of thumbing our nose at technology and just saying we're going to be a bit unique. And um, in the interim between now and our next meeting, we're going to work with um, uh, socializing on uh, the recruitment, the partnership recruitment aspect. So we did go over a lot of the folks that need to be involved in this conversation. And what we'd like to do is um, we're going to, we kind of are going to reach out individually. You know, we each took a couple of potential invitees names under our wings. And so we'll be reaching out to folks and um, extending the invitation and talking a bit about what we, what's going on so far and seeing if the capacity and interest is there, and if not with them, um, who they might recommend that would be a good fit for, um, for this work. Wow, that is so impressive. You guys sound like you, <clears throat> you hit it out of the park. I love the renaming and reframing. I, that gave me ideas right away of connecting things to consumers and, you know, messaging. And I think that's, terrific for all the reasons and connected to climate change and regenerative agriculture. I'm excited to see your diagram. I can't believe how far you guys got. That is um, just stupendous. Um, and that you've got such a cool vibe. <laughs> we're, wow. gonna, we're gonna wanna be as cool as, as the food safety group now. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> so um, Food Hub, the second breakout room, Food Hub Capacity, Jose and Emma if you'd like and who or whoever your um, share out person was. Let's see, I think we uh, settled on Kyle and Edward being our representatives if you wanna share otherwise. I'm happy to this time. <laughs> Uh, you, you know, I, I, it, Emma, it might be best if you do it. We did miss about half of the beginning of it, so. Um, no problem. Might be I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Next time, though. Um, so for our group, um, we felt like there were some things that we needed to um, kind of get out of the way before we could actually start working on um, identifying our leadership roles. Um, and so, yeah, one of the big things that um, we saw was that there's a lot of overlap between the individuals and organizations in our food hub group. Um, and there's also some direct uh, competition for some of us. And so, 
trust building and um, developing relationships with one another was um, really important to everybody in the room to kind of establish who we are, um, what we all do, what our roles are in the food system, in the food hub capacity. Um, so we spent a lot of time just um, kind of acquainting ourselves with one another. Um, and I definitely feel like we all kind of came away with um, feeling like there's probably more needed there um, so that we can build that trust amongst each other to um, participate in these leadership roles. Um, and I think that we also settled on um, needing more time in our meetings to be able to um, just kind of reassess our, our asset map and make sure that um, everything makes sense, that we're not um, leaving any major gaps in there of people who are missing from the table. Um, let's see. Um, so yeah, um, we did have some major questions um, around um, what the definitions of these leadership roles are and specifically around time commitments um, because everybody in our group, um, we all have many hats that we're wearing. We all have lots of different um, time restraints. And so um, that is a concern um, and just making sure that, um, yeah, we all kind of have the, the time and the ability to participate in these planning meetings. Um, so I would look to the backbone team um, to kind of help us with, um, yeah, just getting a little bit more clarification on those items. Um, but we did identify some of our um, leaders and our support team. Um, so I think that at this point, we're feeling like, um, yeah, the interim uh, is, is great. We have um, people named for all of the different roles and understand that that is um, fluid <laughs> and that it might change. Um, but I think um, that's basically everything. Um, Jose or anybody else in our group, is there anything that I'm missing is crucial? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you hit everything, especially with those questions. I think we, we set um, people for the specific roles, um, but still, I think if we get more clarification, um, those people will feel more um, empowered to really, um, you know, just do whatever we, we must do. Um, overall, it went well um, that we had a lot of participants. Uh, so we had a, a lot of backstories to go back to. So that was awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think there's, there's a lot of work to do in this specific area. Um, and we were happy to be part of it. That's excellent. Yeah, you've you've hit on a lot of important um, things. I think it's really important. I think um, hopefully Juan will be able to maybe address, I think even right here, if, if you can Juan, a little more on time commitment related to leadership positions, because I think that's very important for people to, to have a sense of it's so hard to commit to things. And this is, we know we're all stretched super thin. So I think that's important and we do really understand that just saying that someone is a group doesn't make them a group I mean it makes you a group but you know it takes a while to build that um, especially the larger the group so and around you know what is certainly the most sensitive pieces of this work which as you pointed out Emma you know the potential competitive nature not potential there is competition you know, for sales, those are real, or, or whatever it might be, or resources, or, you know, you name it. And so um, we'll be here to help, but you've, you're, that's a hard, those are not easy um, questions to just solve in a, you know, an hour and a half with everything else that you're trying to accomplish there. One, was there anything that you can add about time commitments for leadership positions that might 
help other folks who have exactly the same types of concerns or questions? Sure. Um, there is a process, actually, um, that we will go through <clears throat> once the teams are more self-assembled. In other words, once you have kind of your full roster, if you will, of, of membership, then one of the there is a, 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 an activity there where we go through the um, process of identifying what the requirements are for the delegate and, uh, or the leader for each team what those responsibilities are and what the time commitment will be. Um, we have a basic kind of template for that. However, each team is going to determine for themselves how much of that template they will apply and how they want to uh, adjust it uh, for their particular needs. But yes, we, we're close to, I mean, that will be definitely defined. And uh, when it comes time to actually go through the process of, of uh, selecting your leadership, you'll actually apply uh, that process to your decision-making uh, rounds. I also would just want to comment on the relationship building uh, that is so fundamental to all of this work. And there's a saying that progress moves at the speed of trust. And so uh, the, we get further down the road as we uh, build trust among each other. So. Uh, there'll be activities also to help us um, uh, build that trust among each other. Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> um, and I think our next group is um, Food Access, which I was in, so I know that Jason is our spokesperson. Thank you, Jason. Hello, yeah. <clears throat> um, so we spent um, some time um, identifying our roles, our interim roles. Um, Josh will be our facilitator and evaluation rep. Um, Alicia, our um, scribe, and I'll be a team representative. Um, our interim points of contact, um, that would be Alma and secondary Alicia. So we went straight really into our um, asset mapping and our uh, bulletin board and started working. And, you know, there was a, a lot of big ideas and broad perspective from the yesterday's meeting. And we all thought, well, let's narrow this down and be a little bit more specific and intent to. And so there was some discussion uh, surrounding that. And so we added an additional criteria to our, our board, um, splitting up supply and uh, adding a category um, called distribution. And um, I think we got we got through two of those today before we, we kind of ran out of time. and, and um, so the really the discussion was great. I mean, we we kind of concluded that we're going to have to have some independent breakouts for this this group, and we're going to be establishing some days that are good for everybody to get back together and work through our, our asset mapping, and um, and finally really was to um, it was evident that we really needed to have a mission statement for food access that really. Um, established our course and some guidelines and where we want to go. Um, other than that, that's, that's kind of what we, what we talked about in our breakout. If anybody's got anything else to add, please do so. Yeah, we just, we, we did have, um, I think, I think we have a lot, we have a lot of buckets and we have a lot within each bucket. And so we're, we're a little further behind. So we really have determined that it's gonna take us some more work to get to where maybe other groups are already kind of at, but um, it was really rich discussion. So um, yeah, I think you summed it up though, though, Jason, it was a very good discussion. <clears throat> and there's just a lot, there's a lot to dig, uh, dig into. Um, so our next, um, I don't know if there's anything else regarding reflections that, um, that we need to do to summarize where we're all at. I think some of the, the work, I'm really just, you know, um, as I mentioned to my group yesterday, um, I feel like the teacher who's one chapter ahead of her students. And so, you know, I'm really just learning like you uh, as we go along the way, what our next step, the backbone team will be trying to compile all of this information together and weave it together so that we can start to see what it all looks like together. But um, 
I don't think I have anything else to really um, add in terms of right here. So I'm gonna throw it back to Elena and uh, let you carry on if there's anything else I missed. So thank you all. Thanks, Denise. Christina, your hand is raised. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to say that an evaluation hub, we almost have the data management plan ready. So, um, you know, ideally, folks would let us know who the evaluation representative will be through the Slack channel or, you know, let Elena know or Denise or whomever. Uh, and then uh, when the data management plan is finalized, which will probably be next week, we can send that out um, because that's the first step that we need to get consent from everyone before we can even move forward uh, with uh, evaluation. I also want to add before I forget, because I keep forgetting, um, is that uh, later today you will be receiving a link to a, a survey about the work we've done. Um, so please, and that'll be sent via email. So please just keep an eye out for that and fill it out as soon as you can uh, after the retreat ends, just so everything is fresh in your mind. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christina. And yeah, we will um, we'll go through the documents that you guys use today to take notes. We'll harvest out everything that we need to work on that master calendar and a point of contact list. If something's missing, we're gonna bug your point of contact via Slack or email. So if you're one of them, be ready for that. Um, and otherwise, yeah, you'll hear from us follow up on this activity as you guys continue to meet in small work teams. So I am going to do a very short, um, just quick part three overview of where we're headed. So I know that we, we kind of, branched out into our, our work teams and now we're coming back to the whole of the project and I just wanna give you guys the immediate next steps. And by immediate, I, I guess I don't mean immediate. <laughs> I actually mean more through um, the end of July. So let me pull this up. <clears throat> so, oh my, let's just get through here. This, by the way, the whole deck that I've been building on for the past three days is in your notes in case you really want to revisit. I was going to spend some time back on the work team process just for the next few months, but I'm going to hold on that given our time and just say that these are the buckets in which the as your backbone team, we're really going to be working on to help move the entirety of the project forward. So um, this retreat was a first step in partner onboarding. As we've mentioned many times, we will be providing some Slack orientation and training, and our goal is to really see all of you able to get on there, access materials as we send them. So we'll have some um, workshop opportunities coming up for that. And probably it'll be like a pre-recording so that you guys can socialize yourselves with Slack on your own time and we're not holding you hostage. Um, the other thing that we'll be working on is the communication plan, which is rooted, uh, comes back to the Slack, but also all of the other things that were identified throughout the retreat. So the need for shared language using a glossary tool, um, need for discussing our values and community agreements, what we hold each other to in these spaces as a full team and work teams and um, other tools to help you stay connected. So we'll be working on um, wrapping up a draft communication plan and we'll share that out to all of you as it, as it emerges. We're also gonna be working on a skill building training plan. Um, folks have identified some, some training wishes along the way and we, we asked you or asked your facilitators to also queue up that as potential homework. So in case that wasn't covered, just start brainstorming your wish list of skill building opportunities that would help you engage in the project. So I think it goes kind of to what the questions about capacity for leadership come down to. There's time capacity and then there's skill capacity. And again, we wanna make sure that everybody has equal opportunity to step into leadership in these work teams um, and impact change. And so how can we give the time and space to help you build the skills that you need to be confident in doing so? 
So we'll be doing quite a bit of work on partner onboarding. Then we're going to also be trying to move along our work plan, right? Like how's the work actually going to happen and how are we going to meet those objectives we shared with you on day one? Um, so the ecosystem map, uh, we're going to take all of these actor and asset maps that you guys have been developing and attempt to bring them together into a master kind of ecosystem map where we can identify leverage points. The backbone team will work on that. Christina just articulated the data management plan and the process that that's going through. And then um, I think Juan earlier mentioned that we will also have a process for each work team to start developing out smaller plans that look at the next few months of action, really focused on gearing up for identifying leadership from those work teams so that we can have a, a leadership team across the project. And so that's the third area, uh, leadership development. So we're going to be addressing those conversations about values and community agreements. Um, we know that there's some, some training needed on dynamic governance or decision circle training, those collective impact processes. So we'll be working on that. Um, and as your work teams meet between now and July, the Backbone team will connect with your points of contact to be able to come into your meetings if that's helpful, provide some training and facilitation guidance um, or whatever is gonna help you guys be able to move forward in identifying leadership. And then as Juan has alluded to, and we all have, there will be a more formal process for determining work team leadership through elections. And we're anticipating that that will happen in July. So moving into the fall, <laughs> we hope that we have all of these kind of foundational buckets taken care of and we can start really working towards pushing forward the objectives um, that brought us to the grant. But I just wanted to give you guys a real quick moment to surmise all the things we attempted to, to introduce you to in these past three days and where we're headed. Um, and then I'm gonna hand it over to Juan who's gonna kind of wrap us up in some of our team commitments and additional next steps as well as reflections. But I don't wanna lead over on our time today. Denise, I will hand it to you first. Thank you. You're so good at seeing those hands. Um, very quickly, one thing that many of the partners of all of you might be thinking about is what about the um, financial arrangement? Because as you know, through the grant, you, most of you, I can't say all of you because it wouldn't be true, but most of you uh, are, will be receiving funding from the USDA grant. About 75% of the total grant budget is going back to the partners for your time. Um, and so I just wanna mention because um, you might, you know, we're, what we're working on, we're just a little bit behind on this. We're trying to figure out how to structure it is that we will be sending out um, partnership agreements to everyone. And it will basically have, you know, the funds that were committed to in your letters of support, but it will also just describe a, um, a we're, we're trying to, to establish a system that will just make it equitable. So if there was, and this probably just won't happen, but if there was a partner who maybe just really can't contribute much and can't really participate, we would hate to have those full funds go to that partner instead of maybe being distributed back out among other partners who are doing, um, who are able to do more work or whatever. But we're trying to figure out how to structure the agreements so that people don't feel compelled like, oh, I need to be on a leadership team or I'm not gonna get that money. So we were just waiting until some of these basics have been settled out, but please know that we, you will be hearing from us soon with um, getting back up to you about your, um, the financial arrangements. And we know that that's important to everyone here who um, has counted on that money for your budget. So that's it. And if there Thanks, are- Thanks, Denise. Yeah, important one. That's the, the challenges of not seeing your notes on your PowerPoint. So thanks for bringing that up. Um, and I just wanna offer a moment for clarification from anyone for the next steps that we just shared. Okay, so from us, you'll receive um, all the information from the retreat. You'll be receiving that follow-up survey. And as Denise said, we'll also be in communication about some partner letters and agreements that will go out. All right, Juan, I'm gonna hand it to you. Terrific. All right, everyone. I hope, uh, for me at least, that these last three days have been fruitful. Um, and so just to kind of follow up with what Elena was talking about in terms of, uh, kind of 
what's happening in the short term here. Uh, as has been mentioned, as we as the Backbone team uh, will be sending you various in invitations for various trainings, including the Slack training and other trainings. And so, uh, you know, look for those in your inbox. If you feel already competent, uh, no need to, you know, spend time there. But if you feel you need some support in that, you know, avail yourself to those resources. Uh, as mentioned, we hope to take your uh, individual maps and see what we can do in terms of seeing the bigger picture um, for everybody and uh, seeing how uh, what that looks like. Again, the caveat, as we always say, is that this is evolving. And so um, all those maps give us a picture. It is a snapshot of this point in time. And we'll probably have to take additional snapshots as we go forward. Uh, and as the project uh, unfolds. Um, again, that master calendar will be up. We'll be, you'll be the first to know once that is posted and you can take a look at that uh, calendar. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll have it uh, interactive so that if you see a team you're interested in, you can click uh, on some links there that will uh, uh, let you know who the point of contact is and when their next meeting is and uh, what the uh, Zoom invite link is, uh, that type of thing. Um, for the work teams, um, your main task now is to uh, recruit and onboard those individuals that you felt you needed to add to your teams. Uh, I think that's an important uh, thing to, to finalize because uh, as we move into the next steps, we want there to be full membership on the team so that decisions can start being made and everybody's at the table who needs to be at the table to make those decisions. And so we wanna make sure that inclusivity uh, has been addressed. And when that has been addressed, then we move forward with some uh, decisions to be made. Uh, so you'll be holding your individual work team meetings. Uh, and during those individual team meetings, we'll also have some other tools for you where you're gonna go through a process of starting to identify uh, some of the issues that and activities that you want to uh, address. And uh, there'll be some training for support team members in that process so that they can guide their team through, uh, through that uh, process. When we, so most of the work will, for this project is gonna occur at the decision circle or team level, working team level. Our next big full network meeting uh, is gonna be sometime in July. So again, look in your inbox, there's going to be a doodle poll. And uh, we're looking at uh, probably the week of July 12th uh, for that doodle poll. Uh, and we're gonna look at probably two days with about three, do three, excuse me, three hours each day. So the next session won't be quite as long. But these large sessions are more for accountability and for reporting and for communication. They're not really work meetings per se, uh, because that work should be occurring offline uh, with the individual teams. Um, some of the, during that full network meeting, however, we will probably have some more DEI training. We'll have some more collective impact process training and we'll have some more work team planning. So there'll be individual breakouts again for the teams. At that session, we hope to, for you, all of you to identify the first set of activities uh, that you want to address. And so there's a, a, an activity we'll do to, to kind of um, cue that up. So again, I just want to acknowledge all of your time. Um, it's great that we have so many of you committed uh, to the food and security of feeding New Mexicans. I think that's terrific. Uh, I also want to remind you, uh, there is going to be a post retreat evaluation. We really want your feedback so that the next time we gather, uh, we can be even more efficient and uh, more cognizant of what your needs are. Uh, right now, uh, I don't think I have any other uh, uh, items that we need to do. So we'll open it up for any questions you may have. And Christina has her hand up. And Christina? Hi. Hi, Juan. Thanks. I just want to also say that the survey that will go out will also be collecting some baseline data for the project. So it's not just your average, uh, you know, retreat evaluation. What did you think of this? What did you think of that? It's, it's, it's more than that. So please do 
take it. <laughs> Thank you. Also, just to add to that, again, if there's more than one representative from your organization, don't feel limited that only one rep from each org has to uh, fill out the evaluation. Everyone is welcome to fill out the evaluation. We value everyone's opinion. Elena. What a great segue. Um, I just wanted to remind people that we will define office hours. So we're not just doing that for the retreat. We will have standing office hours as your backbone team. So stay tuned. We haven't put our heads together around exactly when that is. And there is an online suggestion box via Slack if you have a question or a need or a concern to raise. Again, um, we're using Slack as that mode of continuous communication and flat communication. So you don't have to channel all your communications through your point of contact. Um, you can always reach out to us directly until we meet again. So thanks, I just wanted to add that one. Thank you, Elena. Erin, you had a question. Yeah, um, I was wondering about the recordings. Um, so of the of the sessions that we've been uh, in together, what what is our thought? And uh, or maybe we've covered it and I missed, but um, can we share this out with our own in, uh, organization so that they can kind of get a sense of the work that's been done over the last three days? Is that something that is doable and um, and okay? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll let someone else respond, but I believe they're going to be housed on a YouTube channel. Is that correct? And uh, they're certainly accessible to anyone and in the uh, openness of transparency. We have nothing to hide, so they can be shared. If people are willing to commit themselves to listen to three hour recordings or whatever, they're more than welcome. Yeah, the link to that YouTube channel has already been put in chat. Uh, so you can see it there. It, it was being posted just as you made your comment, Aaron. Uh, day one has already been uploaded and uh, our tech person, Michael, is working on day two and day three. So those have not been posted yet, but they will be. Great, thank you. Let's see, Josh, you had a question. Thank you. Um, I think I might have misunderstood uh, something or missed something, but my, my confusion, I have a little bit of confusion around what happens if a group, uh, if a work group is dissolved, um, do those members, are they gonna be contacting current work groups to, to join them? Or if there's a plan about that? Yes, at this point we are in what we call self-assembly, <laughs> meaning that it's all up to you to assemble whatever in whatever uh, configuration you feel makes the most uh, or is the most effective for your engagement. So uh, again, um, it's kind of amorphous, and I know that is very troubling. Most of us are used to being cogs in a wheel, meaning most of us uh, work for institutions or, or, or for a place of employment where we walk into a job description and it kind of details everything we have to do, when we have to do it, who we have to do it, under whom, and all that kind of stuff. So for most of us, that's kind of been the way our work lives have been constructed. With collective impact, it's much more amorphous. It's it's you kind of write your own job descriptions. Each team uh, writes their own scope of work, so that uh, uh, we, you know, for some people that can be a little unsettling because, you know, it's it's not so clear. But um, people will have the options of moving if they were on the New Mexico grown team to any of the other. Uh, uh, work teams that they feel it makes the most sense for them to engage with. And could you clarify just, I think my question was just around how that happens, given that some things were already like talked about internally as to when we're meeting, is that all through the shared calendar? That is correct. Um, and I, I'm going to make an assumption here that the representatives from uh, th that team uh, have the roster of who is there and uh, we'll make sure that it's communicated to all of those individuals that uh, going forward, they need to find a new home. Elena, did you want to add anything to that? Just to say that's a correct assumption. And, and again, it's not necessarily a complete dissolution. It's just taking it to an existing space. So we will, um, I'll just assert, you know, self-select into new teams and be bringing with us the New Mexico grown knowledge. So it's just going to come in a different way into your working teams. So, yeah. 
And so, yes, we will reach out to representatives and points of contact. And Slack is a good place for that because we have threads for each one of the work teams. My last edition. You're good to go, Josh. Great. And a couple more questions, Aaron. Oh, no question. Okay. My hand. No problem, uh, Denise. Uh, yeah, thank you. I was just going to say I'm still in the process. I wanted to wait until I knew what the teams were at least tentatively called before I created those uh, channels on Slack. So if you're on Slack, it may not yet have all of the um, the different channels. So watch for new channels, you know, with the teams that will be on Slack as well. They're just not all populated yet. Thank you. Any other questions from anybody? Any closing comments from anybody? I'll jump in. I just, I'll just echo my gratitude for all of you. I know how busy everyone is. I know it's um, the beginning of summer. <laughs> I know what's happening, right? And what's on the ground. And so I just really appreciate you guys' commitment to coming to the space and to trusting that it will be a good use of time. Uh, we're in this together and figuring out how this benefits the work you're already doing. So I hope that is the sense that you carry with you as you leave um, and look forward to connecting with you all again. But again, so grateful for you showing up and trusting and, and just being here in the space with us. Thank you. All right, everyone, enjoy the, your weekend. Uh, and we look forward to gathering with you again soon. I appreciate your support and we appreciate your expertise and we appreciate your passion. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.